What I found mattered most, and this is what I'm doing now at Fordham, is first of all to persuade people of your competence because if they don't think you have what it takes, being warm and authentic will just scare them, right? They need to know you've got the goods that you can do the job. And also to sort of draw a line under the sand of transparency because they will blame you for the lack of transparency of five presidents ago, right? Because that's <laughs> apparently inherited within higher ed. So you ha I, what I did in both places, and what I'm about to do at Fordham, wish me luck next week, is to come in and say, okay, I've been spending these months listening hard, digging in. I told them I even, and I do this, I find that shelf of dusty task force reports that exist at every institution and I read them. And, um, and, and looked at the data and here's what I've found. Namely, I'm gonna tell you what I found. I'm fresh eyes on this. Hopefully you trust what I find, because why would I bother to tell you if I were making it all up, although some people will always be determined to think that. Um, and to go over in great detail next week at, at town halls, which I'm doing in person, not on Zoom, because I'm telling you I'm giving you the insider um, faculty staff look at this and not posting it on the internet, um, the data of trend lines over time and budget and finance, but also retention and graduation rates and diversity and the things we care most about. And my hope is that, um, that they will believe that I understand this stuff, right? Because I can talk about it quickly in the weeds. I'll be able to answer most of their questions. Also that they can ask me questions in real time for an hour and I won't bristle or get defensive. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, and then I think you have the ability to be authentic and warm and funny as often as possible that you find a way to connect to people and to be human right I mean I, the main point is that if you purport to be perfect or on a pedestal when you inevitably stumble people will be both really disappointed and um, feel a little betrayed, right? But if you can be authentic in being self-deprecating in ways that don't scare them, um, that you can uh, make clear that you're learning that when you make a mistake, you make a big show of fronting it and saying, oh boy, I really screwed that up. Uh, thanks for forgiving me, right? Then, then they're with you in the work, right? That you are human, that you're leading from the front, not from behind on a horse somewhere. Having been a federal prosecutor and trying jury trials, and having been a teacher, that ability in a communication standpoint to persuade, to think about where your audience is and how to get them to where you're trying to convince them of something. And too often, um, people start in the middle, or they speak in jargon and acronyms, or they, they're not they're trying to sound fancy, but they're not really trying to convince. And talking to a jury where one guy is a PhD and another guy is a plumber, and you need to straddle all of that and be convincing and not lose anybody, I think is really valuable. Um, doing the work of representing domestic violence clients taught me the humility that Vince talked about. Also, how to spot sociopaths, which are overrepresented in batterers, also a useful skill. Um, the, <laughs> but I think a lot of our work when we're trying to inspire is there's a world that is fierce in higher ed, but just fierce in the world of relative deprivation and of constantly thinking, oh, I don't have as much as this other university. And um, I, it really hit me when I was on a little regional bank board and we were going on the bank, the corporate retreat and one guy was super jealous that the other guy's jet was bigger. Thought, well, this doesn't end, right? You can never be satisfied if you're constantly looking over your shoulder at who is more. And so for the sake of our people and our institutions and of their basic happiness, reminding them of the point of what we do and why we do it matters enormously. And and constantly calling them back to the students, to the work of mission, of impact, of how we get to be this force multiplier at a moment when the whole world's falling apart and, and how much that matters. And I talked in my inauguration about resisting the temptation of unrelenting cynicism. That way that we can always have low expectations that will never be disappointed. But the problem is our students are watching us and they need to know whether they can matter in the world, whether they should have hope, whether they can make a difference. And so we need to model that for them.